joining us now to talk more about that and how this will all work is Labour Minister Seamus O'Regan. Thanks for being here, Minister. How this will all work, exactly. Exactly, yeah. and I think that's what everybody wants yeah. to know. So let's go through some of the numbers here. 3.9 million homes by the year 2031. Of that, 1 million homes are already being built, so it's really 2 million net new homes. Of those, your government is tied to 1.2 million homes, so that's 800,000 from the provinces. But to restore affordability, CMHC says you need an additional 3.5 million homes by 2030. So this isn't really going to solve the crisis. No, but it gets us a long way there. I mean, look, you know, this this is fairly comprehensive what we've announced, um, and some of it is, is items and you know plans that we've announced before. But we are packaging it together and giving people, I think, a clear idea going into the budget um, when there will be even more details announced, giving the people a clear idea of of how this will work, but also and our priorities, but also I think our ambition. Um, the only way this is going to work is if we all work together on this. Uh, it is going to be working. I know you're probably going to get to the question on Alberta soon, but it does mean working. It does mean working with provinces and territories. Right. It does mean working with municipalities. Each has their own jurisdiction. What we're attempting to do is just get stuff built. Like you know, Canadians, there is an impatience that um, that Canadians feel now, and a sense of urgency. We're feeling it whether you know you're paying rent or paying a mortgage, um, or you know you're paying rent and you want someday to pay a mortgage. People are feeling it. Everybody's feeling it. Uh, it, is, it has gained an urgency, and so, you know, this is fairly ambitious and broad sweeping. Um, you know, this is not necessarily where we were either a year ago, and I don't know where we'll be a year from now. But right. I know that this puts us much further ahead of making things more affordable for kids. But this also isn't new. So why should people believe that you're going to get there? And why should they believe that this isn't just a political play because you're being dragged into it by opposition parties? Because, as you said, we're already getting houses built. We're already working on that. And we've already got 179 agreements signed right across with cities and, and towns right across the country through our housing accelerator fund saying, OK, look, we're serious about this. We're going to give you money that's going to help get more fundamental uh, things ironed out, like making sure that people aren't just municipalities aren't working on paper anymore, that they're working through, you know, electronic, uh, that they can get permits done faster, that they can do things like having a fourplex by right, for instance. And, mm -hmm. you know, these things that have been have added up and, 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 you know, some of these complaints aren't new, but we are working on them. These housing accelerator but, funds are but 179 have, communities across the country. They're happening. In all fairness, you have been working on it. And the mm -hmm. record isn't great. I mean, just as an example here, the loan program to build apartments in the 2017 housing plan, $18 billion out the door uh, and only uh, and 11,000 constructed, more on the way. But it's been seven years. I know, but some of this change, particularly the urgency that we have now, Mike, it's substantive, right? Um, it does. So where's that urgency from? The housing crisis didn't start this past summer. It's been developing. So why the urgency only now? It has been developing. I think I think that what people found, particularly coming out of COVID and as we came out of an, you know, coming out of inflation, coming out of high interest rates. I mean, those those are turning, but people are feeling it in their pocketbook. Everybody is feeling it. Um, and I think, you know, particularly I, I look back at last summer. Uh, as a time that, you know, people in my constituency were telling me this is real. And I think we were all feeling it. And I remember the cabinet retreat that we had and then the caucus retreat we had at the end of summer. You know, if you listen to your constituents, you feel their urgency pretty quickly. And but so they look, haven't been saying it just from last summer, in all fairness. Constituencies across the country have been saying that this housing crisis has been a problem, not just since last summer, but at least for two years. No, it's true, uh, but I would say that you know there was there was a point where we all realized, okay, we have to do something. And and look, there's there's what was yeah. that point then? I think that there's an urgency that people felt that interest rates uh, and inflation were really fitting them in the pocketbook. Um, and I think that that you know that is partially coming out of COVID. Um, it's, it's hard to put, you know, a, a seminal moment on these things. And you're right to say it builds, but certainly it built, I think, in, in much more urgency and intensity last summer. And I think that we all said we got to do something. Look, it wasn't because you saw the polls that were swinging wildly in favor of the Conservatives? You could ask, well, what, you know, does one reflect the other? I just know that I listen to my constituents. I don't pay much, believe it or not, I don't pay much attention to polls. But boy, I knew that things were hitting people. And I think a lot of us did. And we went, we got to be ambitious in what we're doing. And, and we've got to be and impatient. I would say. But you've got to be substantive. I mean, look, you could say, let's go out and build X number of homes, but you, you got to have provinces, territories uh, on side where you can get them. You certainly need municipalities, and you certainly need to work with other partners like banks and financial institutions. And where you can get change some fundamentals, which I think Sean Fraser has been working very hard on, like making sure that, you know, you work with municipalities who often have very limited resources to make sure you do things like build infrastructure and the fairly unsexy build, business of building more water and sewer to get ready for so, those 
expanded houses. So then how do you do that when you consider that Alberta has just introduced the Provincial Priorities Act, which even Danielle Smith affectionately called the state of my backyard bill? But it's not, right? These are Canadians. Albertans are Canadians, and the federal government does have a role to play. And look, what can I say? Look, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, this is the route that they're taking. Um, and I'm hoping that, that we can work, find a way to work around it. We usually do. I was natural. Work around or work with? Work with. Look, I was natural resources minister coming out of 2019 and, and uh, you know, steering the oil and gas industry through uh, an oil price war and COVID. We work together. It wasn't the headlines, but we did work together. And when things are important, we do work together. Uh, and I'm certainly hopeful because we all have the same constituents. It doesn't matter. They all want us to work together on this sort of stuff. So there's a, you know, I, I have to take the premier at her word. I take her very seriously if she's decided to proceed this way. But, you know, we have to find a way to work with one another. It's too important. Do you think that that, that bill is a problem? in terms of trying to get things done in her province? Because she points to Quebec that has one exactly like that, where the federal government has to deal with the province instead of going to make deals with the municipalities. So I guess my question to you is, should Alberta have one of these bills as well? I think it's just, I think right now what it just does is it inflames things and it, and it distracts things. And I think that we got, got to get down to the business of building homes for people and figuring out a way to make sure that by increasing, by using some levers as we've outlined in this plan and, and by uh, working together that we can find a way Way to lower rents, lower mortgages, perhaps also by increasing supply. That's part of the plan. But does it inflame things with Quebec as well? They've had it in place. You guys work along with that. Why we'll not? Look, we'll find a way to work with Quebec as we've always found a way to work with Quebec. We'll find a way to work with Alberta. I came from provincial government, so I worked five years in provincial government before I you know, came here. Um, you have to respect the provinces where they are, but this is a jurisdiction in which we all share responsibility. We'll find ways to work with each province as we always do. Trying to be collaborative, it sounds like. Ah, uh, that's the name of the game. I just, I don't, look, you only have so much political capital and you only have so much time in the day, and I've learned that lesson the hard way. You know, how do you use it? I'd much rather get to get to business. Uh, I don't have much time for well, anything else. Only so much time in the day, only so much time in this interview. I've got one minute left. You're the labor minister. One-fifth of Canada's construction workforce is retiring. 80, nearly 80,000 workers are they're nearing retirement. This is an ambitious plan. Do you have the workers to actually get these houses up? Yeah, well, firstly, part of this plan is also working together on interprovincial uh, credentials and also making sure that when we bring in immigrants, as we do, let's say, for doctors or whatever, we are now going to be focusing on construction workers as well. There are people with recognized credentials in other parts of the world, the Ukraine, for instance, who can come here and start building. We need to recognize those credentials. That's something that unions have been telling me in the past two years that I've been, that I've been labor minister. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense. Let's get busy on that. So is that increasing immigration then as a so result? That's making sure that the people that we bring in, that we recognize their credentials and bring them and get them to work. Because it's in Ontario alone, the stat I have here is there's a need of over 100,000 workers. Oh, I know. It is sizable. So immigration is a great place to start. And also having a nimble labor market that can move across the country, putting in like a labor mobility tax credit, which we've already done and we keep increasing to make sure that, you know, as my... As people from out my way, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians proudly do, work wherever the work is, anywhere in the country, making that easier for them. If that way, we're utilizing our best people in the places where they're needed most in the country. Last question for you. It's an ambitious plan. Your deadline is 2031. People need homes today, tomorrow, you know, next year if they can wait around for it. What do you tell those people? We are doing our level best to get more houses built right now, as you've recognized at the beginning of the interview. Those, you know, there are houses that we have started that are under construction. We have been at this but for some time. it takes time. It takes time, and, and you may not see the result of that, and you may not, your government may not survive this, because going into 2025, there's an election campaign, and that could or could not go forward. So there are still going to be people who need homes. I have said from the beginning, it is so easy to get overwhelmed by the mass of this problem, by the sheer size of this problem, no question, but it's not gonna get us anywhere. And I'm and thinking about the next election and then just, you know, what, paralyzing myself and trying to find, only working on the things. No, but you should have done it effect. earlier, I guess, is, is, is the question, or shouldn't you have done this earlier? I think that we are, we have been working very steadily on it, but will I, you know, I will admit there is a brand new, not brand new, but there is an intensity that has certainly happened over the past couple of years. As our constituents have felt it, as we have all felt it, we are getting busy on it. This is a big and ambitious plan. This is exactly what we should be doing. Okay. Minister of Labor, Seamus O'Reilly, got to leave it there. Thanks Excellent. so much for joining us. Appreciate it.